my painting is pretty dry here. I just glued on a couple more of these little ties here. And I've just been practicing. I'm trying to figure out what to do with the background. I don't like it just flat black, but I don't want to, this is very busy, so I don't want to make it, I don't want to make it too, um, I might have to pop that, pop that bubble. And try to get it to stick down. There we go. I remember from my old first jobs as I uh, got into art. Well, my first jobs, I was at a sign making shop and we had to weed letters. You know, when you do a. I used to make those big signs for shops and there'd be a, um, a cutout machine and they'd cut out, it'd cut out the letters and I'd have to weed them. And sometimes there'd be bubbles and you just break them like that, get the air out of there. But I don't want anything growing in there after years or any weird thing like that. figure out how to get some contrast here. Maybe I'll do another glaze over it in just pure gold. But what I'm going for here is like, you, you know on dresses sometimes they have those ethereal looking gauzes and sort of streaming off the back or streaming. Okay, now that I have the initial layer down, now I can kind of do streaks of thicker gold, maybe. More gold. Okay, so if you've seen part one of this, I've already apologized for my head being in the way. I have to figure out this filming situation so that I didn't know my head obviously was in the way when I filmed this. I thought the camera was off to the side, but um, turns out my head was to the side, so it's in the way. But I figured I'd leave this here because you can kind of still see what I'm doing. And I won't show all the footage, and I'm trying to cut out the parts with my head in the way but I'm sorry for that but anyway what I'm trying to do here is just create a little bit of contrast so that it looks like that gauzy material you know um, so that there are little streaks of pure magenta and streaks of thicker gold mixed in with the thinner glazes and that's if you really have the patience what you want to do is do glazes in layers so you would lay down the first glaze in like a watered down gold um, and then you could do another layer of gold and magenta and thin down and just build up those layers. But, of course, as impatient as I was, um, I just wanted to do it all <laughs> quickly. Sometimes I get that way. But uh, sometimes I can have the patience of a saint and spend hours and hours. But for some reason, I just wanted to stay with the acrylic pour 
uh, type of painting in that you do it quickly and loosely. So I'm trying not to get bogged down in my own details because that's what I'm trying to work myself out of. Um, you know, strong, realistic details and get more into the flow of it and the abstract shapes. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. As I said in my part one of this video, here's where I'm painting over the skins and just making it look better and it really does work just painting over as well. So I'm just bringing the flecks of gold down and sort of integrating all the sort of parts to, to integrate together here, making it look a little more cohesive and um, give the piece a sense of continuity by bringing the gold flecks all through the dress. Well, I'm trying to keep the, the swirl patterns where they show, but they're not all pretty everywhere. There are some nice swirl pattern areas and some that uh, could just use some of this paint over it, so to speak. and. I'm just going with the flow of the dress here, really. I really have to hold myself back here with the bling because anyone that likes bling knows you can go too far with it. colors person. Okay, this is worth mentioning because this creates a cohesive color uh, painting. So the magenta I'm using is cool and the pour is very um, warm. So I'm painting some magenta on that bottom corner there to tie it in with the rest of the magenta I used sort of touching up all over. So you kind of want to bring those colors into every area um, to make it look like it's the same, uh, basically the same pore or it came from the same thing and it just creates um, a cohesive look. Maybe a little bit of this gouache in there, a little, a little gouache mixed with the magenta. Okay, right here I'm using the Windsor Newton gouache to sort of make the arm and the face a little less pink, a little less rosy, and so I'm just dabbing it on there, nothing special. And it's very awkward to paint this way for the camera because I want to get all up over it, but I knew that my head would be in the way, so it's hard to paint that way. But I'm just using the gouache, um, it's kind of out of frame, but you can kind of see here, I'm just qu really not doing it very, um, I'm using an actually old crappy brush too that annoyed me, but of course I was too lazy to go get a tiny brush. I just 
I was just getting it on there really and it's just uh, you know dabbing it around with my finger so again playing very fast and loose with the paint and the paintbrush <laughs> okay so I wonder if I should do this glazy kind of look oh, I wonder if I should leave it black I just don't know I feel I should glaze out this scarf too just right here to here or something but I don't know what color or anything. It'd have to be like a greenish. I'm so used to working with watercolors, I just don't know how to do this acrylic paint anymore. I forgot. I have forgotten. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? That looks like brown silver auburn hair. I would love to have done her hair like that. Okay, I'm going to do another painting with her hair like that. That is amazing. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is doing a test. I'm mixing white in with the magenta and matching the color against, uh, right here, I'm matching it against just to see how it look will look against the black. And it doesn't look good at all because it's way too cool. So um, if you watch this, it's, it's like a very sort of baby bubblegum pink color and see how it just does not work. So I think I was looking for a background color to glaze out and sort of fade down the stark matte blackness of the background. And that bubblegum pink color just did not work. So that little test there showed me I couldn't use white in whatever color I was gonna mix in to dab on the background. I don't know, I'm gonna have to see that dry. Okay, what I'm doing here is true glazing. So I have very, very um, watered down with uh, water and like glazing medium. Uh, so that it's very, very transparent and I'm painting over the green parts uh, and so the white parts come out to be pink and then the green parts end up being toned down a little cooler into a neutral tone so that they go with the rest of the painting better. Okay, so this solution with the um, very glazed out magenta is giving me that gauzy sort of scarf flowing look I want, the ethereal um, very flowy look but it also accomplishes that it ties the foreground object which is the scarf sort of back into the background as well it doesn't look so it doesn't look like a big sticker stuck on a matte black background if you know what I mean so it's almost like a transition into a background if that makes any sense Okay, and then as you'll see that magenta is getting very cool looking, so then that's when I take out the gold and I mix in the gold with it in order to tie it in and make it a little warmer and make it um, as um, to, to tie it into the dress which is very gold and warm. So I want them looking different, but you have to add a little bit of gold in there in order to tie it and make it look like it's um, a part of the full painting. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe some of this off now. If I can. Whoa. I think this is going to dry lighter than it looks. I have to see if I can put like the very weakest sort of background color to wait till that dries. 
just to sort of integrate it in. I need that really yellow. What was that? What did, how did I make that? bring this green in a little bit and make it a little less sagey, less dulled down and a little more vibrant because it just needs to be integrated just a little bit. It's a little gold in there, that does it actually. Oh shit. Sometimes that works. Kind of want to paint a teeny tiny little crown on her just for interest. Okay, those are the very last touches though. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. And then, so th these have dried now. That does not look good. That doesn't look good. That's kind of, I love this. No, I'm gonna leave that black. That looks I would good. do like a band like that going in the background or something. But there's just something over here that's needed right here. Right there. I'm not sure what. Okay, maybe I could think about hanging a little gold purse with tassels. How cute would that be? Okay, that's a good idea. I might do that. That's very 3D. All right, I'm going to start painting again. I got, I uh, made a sort of watered down magenta and gold mixture to just sort of, I don't know, I want some sort of depth back here. I, I realized what I don't like about it. It's too flat and it will change when the whole thing is varnished. But then I have my gold here and I'm going to do an object here because it's just too plain there. So I'm just going to do... Something like this, I think. Get some texture in there. Just a little bit of color. So something really bothered me about just that flat blackness in the background of hers and I just wanted to tie her in just a little bit more with the background to make her look more sticker, less sticker like and you know like someone put her on as a sticker and more sort of a, an integrated painting. So that is just really um, glazed out magenta paint. Um, I think I might have put a tiny bit of gold in there too, but I think it's mostly just magenta and it, because it's so see-through and um, not watered down but with um, acrylic uh, glazing medium that it's just sort of see-through. So it's, it's still black but it's less of a black and it sort of ties the foreground into the background a bit. So right here is the exciting, really fun part, working on the very last, uh, very detailed parts of the painting. And here's where I'm just bringing out thicker, more opaque streaks of gold in the gauzy um, material. I could also put uh, sparkles in there. I could have put little dots, um, many, so many options, but I just went with the streaks of thicker gold. OK, 
Okay, so here's more of the fun part. I start doing dots in the dress. And I started off with my brush, uh, and they ended up looking imperfect, perfectly imperfect. But later on, I switched to the end of the paintbrush stick, and then the dots ended up being perfectly round. So I like both ways, but it's really satisfying to do some perfect dots with the end of your stick. So, um, and literally, I could have put any pattern in the dress, but I just um, wanted to finish it, and so I just put some little dots in there. Okay, well, despite my awesome head being totally in the way, uh, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm painting the purse. Luckily, we, I got some footage of it. Um, so I did practice the pur purse. Um, it just came out of my head. I just had a simple, I want to keep the shape simple, just like the, the cutouts of the skins are simple. So, I mean, I just, I didn't research it or anything. I just vi envisioned this purse. So... I'm just doing it out of my head and I practice it first to make sure that the gold was okay um, on the paper to the side that you didn't see that but um, I'm just painting this on freestyle or freehand rather but it took um, a couple of coats of this gold paint to um, so I painted this first layer and then I let it dry and then I um, painted over the purse again in sort of a gauzy way because I kind of wanted to uh, one rule in design is to um, use the same sort of shapes in different places in your design so because of the gauzy sort of flowing fabric I also wanted like some sort of swinging tassels but I wanted them to be sort of gauzy too so that's why I, I painted them kind of like the fabric Okay, I've just painted a little bit of, um, I went over this again, the purse, and I've done some little gold embellishments here, as you can see, just some dots, so I'm going to keep going with that. And I'm not liking that these aren't uniform, actually maybe I should do it like this. Wow. Just started doing that, okay. <laughs> okay, so as you can see here, I did a lot of embellishing with some little dots with the paintbrush that I didn't film. I just had a creative moment and didn't feel like setting up the camera and all that. But then I discovered the end of the paintbrush would be better. I mean, deep down we know that, but, um, and it would be even better. I need to get one of those, um, you know, nail, Art, nail art things where it has the different sizes of dots because I think that's just a good tool to have and I should have that um, and so you know making these dots with the end of the paintbrush is uh, they're just more round and more uniform and easier to do than using my paintbrush so I sort of discovered that halfway in but that's okay the rest of the dots look organic and not perfect and I'm okay with that so um, they're looking really good and I'm just going to keep going uh, embellishing the dress in this way. You can also see at this point because it's dry the sort of really dark magenta glaze that I did around the edge of the dress. It's just some very 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 subtle texture to sort of make it not look like that sticker look to sort of tie the dress in with the background.
I also have uh, silver and metallic pens that are like an enamel that I can paint with too, which I could have used, and I used them to sign my name because you have so much control with them, and I could have used them to do the dots as well. Okay, what I'm doing right here is I created a glaze of a dark, very watered down, or not watered down, but transparent, um, dark color, not black, but a mix of colors. And I'm just bringing out the uh, folds in the dress and that gives the illusion of shadow to bring out um, folds in the dress to make it look like fabric. Okay, and now I'm painting her face, but I'm intentionally keeping it very, very simple. I'm not going to get into any details uh, of realism that I would like to do, but I'm trying to, again, keep this a very stylized uh, version of a woman in a dress. So if you can see here, I literally kept it to one eye, a very big pink faded out cheek, and just a very small line for her uh, lips. Okay, that's good. Um, I wanted to bring the gold down just the teeniest bit. I wish I could see without the glare. Yeah. So here, unfortunately, it's being painted off screen, but um, that's something for me to look at next time I film a painting. I'll make sure that it's set up properly. Um, it's just hard to see in the viewfinder, but unfortunately, that's where I'm painting the, those gauzy streaks at the top. I know they're really fun to, um, to watch being painted, uh, and that's where I'm extending the hair. So hopefully you can um, just see partly how I did that. I just extended the hair out and did it just like I did the dress. Okay, I'm just doing the finishing touches here, creating some contrast and doing some nice thick gold and magenta streaks through the gauzy part. And if you can see there, I'm holding my arm. Uh, this is a tip if I'm holding it like an art bar uh, so that my whole arm moves to do the streak rather than trying to do a nice wave with just my wrist and my hand. That would be too controlled. Okay, all I have left to do is I want to do a little embellishment on the purse. So I'm going to do dots here. This isn't still wet. I'm gonna start in the middle. Okay, so what I'm using here is a gel pen, which is basically um, pigment ink. So it's like uh, a little tiny paint pen. white ones there but I can't do it now because it's still wet I think all there is left is to sign it I'm gonna use this pen let's see here yes you can see I'll get a better shot in the morning it's late at night this is when I get the most creative so um, okay everybody so here is the finished piece um, it's kind of hard to see because the lighting is well the lighting's not too bad you can kind of see the shimmer on her 
um, I'm really happy with the way she turned out. Um, yeah, so I just finished off. I saw a little spot there in the hair I wanted to fix, so I just um, went in there and you can. I'm going to try to tilt this around so you can see the shine of the gold paint and see the detail of the purse. So I really hope you enjoyed watching me what I did with the skins of my pores and I'm doing a whole series of these lovely ladies. Um, this one I'm calling Marigold. I've always loved that name and Marigold really suits her. So thank you so much for watching and I really hope you um, got some ideas uh, or I inspired you to create some art. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.